Okay. Good morning, dear friends, dear brothers. I am Professor Sarika from Istanbul, Turkey, and it's a great pleasure to be among you for this excellent meeting. And before beginning to my presentation, my sincere thanks to Dr. Al Hajeri, Dr. Al Anizi, and also Dr. Al Mahmid and the all organizing committee members for organizing this meeting and inviting me, giving me this chance to present two lectures during this meeting. It's a great pleasure. Once again, cordial regards from Turkey and also as the co-chairman of International Alliance of Eurolatiasis, sincere regards from all our members. Over the next 20 minutes, it will be my task, this presentation, to talk about minimal invasive management of pediatric stones. We know that pediatric urothiasis is something else. It's a multifactorial disease with high recurrence rates and greater morbidity when compared with adults. And when we evaluate the etiology, here you see metabolic problems may be responsible around 50% of the cases, which requires a certain true metabolic evaluation in all cases in order to prevent future recurrences and limit the number of procedures in the growing kidneys of these patients. It's a management dilemma because the procedures may have a possible adverse effects on the growing kidneys, small kidneys, significant recurrence rates, common underlying metabolic di disorders, and cooperation among the involved departments. Pediatric, pediatric surgery sometimes are, it's a task when compared with adults. There are some facts. Decision making, making is harder in these patients. They are more likely to pass stones than adults. We see it during the clinical practice. Even large stones can pass spontaneously in these cases and stone composition must be kept in mind when we decide about the future treatment, further treatment. What are the aim? It's clear. Complete stone clearance with minimal or no complications, eradication of infection and correction of any anatomical or metabolic abnormality in these cases. With this aim, we have to combine the most effective and minimal invasive surgical treatment and appropriate prophylactic regimen should be in stock. What are the options? Shock radiotherapy, ureteroscopy, and PNL. Beginning with shock radiotherapy, we know that first it has been applied in adults, and years after, depending on the experience gained, children it began to be treated with this modality. However, today we know that it has been not uh, approved so far by FDA, I mean this treatment modality. We have some advantages with this modality in kids. Children, they pass stone fragments well and they don't require standing in the majority of the cases. IV sedation in all of the cases is enough maybe for the treatment now with the new type of little treatments. Small focal zones and less pain is an advantage. Better fragmentation rates could be anticipated in children due to the shorter duration of stone disease, greater stone fragility, lower impedance of shock waves, smaller body habitus, and also early mobilization of the kids. When we evaluate the outcomes, here you see if the stone size is less than one centimeter, around 100% stone rates could be anticipated. Even in larger stones, we will discuss it a little bit later with my dear friend. Here you see, again, 70% stone free rates could be anticipated. So, high stone burden and multiple stones could be the responsible factors for lower stone rate. This is a nice study. It's old, old but even in very young uh, patients, Lotman, Shukla, and McLaurie, they evaluated. You see the age of the children. They were treated with shock values and stone free rates. Highly, highly successful. This is one of our study performed in kids, and child's age is an important factor. And does it affect the outcomes? Yes. If the child is younger, as you see here, when we compare the younger and older children in younger kids, we may have really higher stone for rates, single session, and number of mean sessions will be less in younger children. How about lower pulse stones? Is a headache in adults? We know it very well. Actually, high energy shock waves, they are, they are effective. They are disintegrating, but when it comes to pest stones, 
out of the body due to the location of lower pole it's not so easy to pass them but when we compare children with adults in terms of the success rates for lower pole stones again our results did show that children can pass the lower pole stones in a very highly successful manner with higher stone free rates and lower complication rates when compared with adults how about obesity it's a certain factor for adults but we evaluate this factor our team with the publication from my group and it is not a big deal that a certain factor for kids and uh, kids with higher body weight index values also could be treated with high energy shock waves with higher stone free rates here you see 94 percent stone free rate versus 100 percent sedation is enough a new study also from our group in older children there is no need for a general anesthesia if the child is older than 10 years this is also another advantage for older children not to let them undergo general anesthesia with IV sedation if it is appropriately uh, taken with a dose adjustment adjustment so this is a nice study summarizing the outcomes overall success rates 70 percent to 100 percent depending on stone size and stone location even in second calculi 73 percent stone free rates lower pole you see really uh, successful how about complications 20 uh, studies and, the, and in the end we see that all complications are in main, minor range when we evaluate them clavian in the class, uh, classification system and the, in number one is the transient hematuria otherwise major complications are not expected ureteric stones can be also treated in children very well here uh, you may see easily that some free rates may range between 76 to 100 percent in a successful manner Pre-treatment rates may be higher but when you evaluate the invasiveness of the procedure second session if the patient child is stone free it will be no task this is a study a recently published study coming from turkey again comparing the shock value to this rirs for stones sizing less than two centimeter and in the end the errors were able to show that active procedure session and sessions and number of anesthesia sessions was higher in rirs procedural time and anesthesia time were higher in shock value to this group stone size was the most important factor and similar success rates shock value to could be chosen as a good alternative in such stones going through the guidelines here you see in the majority of the stones particularly sizings less than 1.5 centimeter shock veritotripsy in children will be in the first place to treat the stones that is inevitable and let's keep in mind as the first let's say option how about ureteroscopy ureteroscopic management of stones in children had a delayed adoption why because we needed to use large instruments in the beginning experience came from the adults but in the beginning we were a little bit let's say in difficulty higher stone uh, fragment clearance rate after shock veritotripsy did led us to perform shock veritotripsy and lower incidence of sh stone formation maybe but in the last 20 years techniques refined equipments improved and we now have smaller instruments here you see 4.5 uh, french uh, ureteroscopes semi-rigid ureteroscopes and flexible scopes to treat the stones in kids that is acceptable durability of equipment increase holmium back laser has been introduced now we have tulium and but overall clinical experience did increase a nice overview evaluating the outcomes of semi-rigid ureteroscopy in kids 15 studies with a huge number of cases and in the end the stone free rates is around 80 percent to 100 percent with staged procedures dilation needed in a limited number of cases and complications were again limited like similar in adults and for lower ureteric stones shock value to tripsy is in the first place but also for upper uh, ureteric stones it will be also uh, comparable with rirs we have flexible scopes now and flexible ureteroscopy beginning with uh, dr cannon in 2000 the first series now depending on the experience increased we now perform flexible ureteroscopy kids too and here are the studies published so far stone free rates are acceptable higher 
storm free rates with minimal complications can be expected similar to adult cases. Flexible neuroscopy in preschool eight children, study from Turkey, Dr. Erkurt, and 65 cases, preschool age, mean stone size you see here, and stone free rates was 83% and 92% the first and second procedures. Complications were minimal, acceptable, and it's a good, safe alternative in these cases. In 16 stones, a study from my group, again, we treated the 16 stones in 14 cases. In the stone, you see the stone size. Urinal excess sheet was used in uh, a majority of the cases. Double GS10 were placed, was placed in 12 cases. We operated minor complications in two cases only, and all cases were stone free after a month period. This uh, alternative can be apply, applied in, in, in infants in preschool. Uh, so again, uh, as this study from Turkey shows, with really higher acceptable uh, stone freeze in the end. When we compare RIRS versus shock value for medium-sized stones, nice study published by Malkus and his co-workers, 16 children, group one, shock value group two RIRS, after a single session, stone free rates, 70% for shock electricity, 87% for flexible urethroscopy. But think about the invasiveness. Passing the flexible scope through the urethra of a male child will not be so acceptable or easy, and we need to think about the possible consequences. And mean operative time, fluoroscopy exposure, and complications were similar, and after three months, you see, some free rates, 93% versus 96%. Then, Let's consider chocolate literacy in the first place. Mini PNL versus RIRS. Again, for the same size stones, overall stone free rates was not different, same with each other, RIRS and mini PNL. And mean number of anesthesia, you see your complication rates were not different. And RIRS has a shorter operative time, fluoroscopy time, and hospital stay when compared with mini PNL. This is coming from the Scandinavian area, a summary maybe. Uh, 24 URS procedures, mean age 9 years, and large stone size 12 ml, and no interoperative complication, and some free rates in the end were 90%. Shall we use urethral excess sheet in kids also? Yes, but we need to be highly careful. Available smallest sheet is around 9.5 French in diameter, and complications can occur. If we use it for larger stones, we will have the chance to have limited complications and higher stone free rate, that's clear. But again, we need to be very careful. A nice study evaluating the urinary excess sheet use in children weighing less than 20 kilograms, that means smaller children, 13 children, 16 procedures, and shock weight, uh, stone free rates was achieved around 82% of the cases, and with auxiliary procedures, it was around, in all cases, 100%. Minor complications and no urinary sutures or Reflux has been uh, noted in any case in these cases. Summarizing the flexible urethroscopy from all aspects in kids in this live study, five studies, 250 cases, some free rates 70, 76% to 100% with stage procedures and complications. Minor and severe ones are really acceptable and limited. How about uh, rigid uh, ureteroscopy in kids uh, for uh, ureteric stones, here again, we may say that stone free rate is really higher and acceptable. Safety and uh, efficacy of ureteroscopy, in, uh, this is a systematic review, 11 studies and 400, uh, more than 400 cases. Complications are minor in nature, stone free rates are really acceptable, and uh, ureteroscopy and laser stone fragmentation for this population is a safe and effective treatment alternative with higher stone uh, free rates. Guidelines again, it show us that it can be apl applied in renal pelvic stones with shock value so of course in the first place and also for stones uh, in all uh, positions less than 1.5 centimeters. Lastly, going through the PNL in children, you know, it was first supported by Woodside and Scope in 1985, and we have also some concerns regarding the application of PNL children 
due to the long-term renal damage, smaller kidney size, relatively large instruments, radiation exposure, and risk of major complications such as bleeding and infection. But the indications are similar to adults, as you see here, and guidelines do show us that in larger stones, stone sizing larger than two centimeters, PNL will be in the first place still in the uh, guidelines. Complications are limited. A number of studies you see here, summary, and stone free rates differ depending on the size of the stone and location of the stone between 68 to 89%. But over time, in the beginning, we used larger instruments in the growing kidney of the pediatric cases, and this was a major concern. When the miniaturization concept had been introduced into our uh, clinical practice, mini per procedure, first by Jackman and his co-workers, has been introduced. Here you see the uh, 12 French dilatation and 8.5 or 11.5 pediatric nephroscope. This was the first application of mini PNL in kids. And the first publications did show that it is effective, it is really minimally invasive, and we need to perform this procedure in kids in order to limit the risk of invasive uh, complications. And over time, we, the comp uh, results of other uh, publications have been seen in the literature. Here you see 20 mini PCNL and 11 cases had second stones. And total success rate was around 92%. The primary stone free rate was around 84%, and it raised after 91% treating the residual fragments. Then we evaluate the RIRS with mini PNL. Comparable data could be accepted, but the uh, stone size will be larger for mini PNL, and we need to think about the uh, complications of this surgery. So mini PNL continues to be the best choice for stones, for larger stones in kids, depending on the results of this study. Further miniaturization of the equipment did bring some certain types of treatments, beginning with ultra mini PNL with, uh, from India, and uh, they, in this modality, they used 13 or 14 French sheet. And in the end, they evaluated outcomes, really minimal invasive, no bleeding, and outcomes are really excellent. Up to two, uh, two centimeter, the stones in the kids could be treat, uh, treated in an excellent manner, particularly lower pole stones. Later on, further miniaturization did bring the super mini PNL from China, a good friend of us, Professor Zeng. And the size of the instruments went down further. Here you see 10 to 12 French nephroscopy tract and seven French inner sheet. And what of the nephroscope? 4.8 French. And the main uh, characteristic of this uh, treatment was active irrigation and active suction. Active suction means bringing all the fragments out as they formed during the laser fragmentation. You see the, here the system, and you are irrigating. Time, please. Time. Yes, okay, I'm finishing. And by using SMP in pediatric cases, it's stone-free rates, tubeless PCNL, totally tubeless PCNL rates were really high. Micro perk was another modality, but was a little bit dead bird for me, not popularized, but in some centers it's being performed in experience and it will be the treatment of choice, particularly for children. A study from Turkey did show that really limited complications and highly successful results. We can apply spine PNL in kids. It's growing and growing with higher success rates and limited complication rates. It will be the treatment of choice in the future. Last but not least, in the beginning we performed PNL with adult-sized instruments, and I may say that this is a study from Turkey, and this is a study from my group. I may say that if you don't have mini PNL instruments in your area or no experience, you may go further. You may perform standard PNL, PNL in experience, and it will be successful with limited range of complications. So we need to be very careful. We need to use the minimal invasive. Uh, alternatives, shock-related alternatives in the first place, and we need to evaluate the 
metabolic, metabolic position of the kidney, state of the kidney, in order to limit the recurrence rate. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor Kamal. Uh, we will leave the question at the